Welcome to Digital Asset News, to get top stories in cryptocurrency and digital assets and break them down to bite-sized pieces. Today, we've got some pretty good stories about what could potentially happen. The first up, the largest U.S. options exchange, CBOE, applies to list Vanex Bitcoin ETF. So if you're waiting for a Bitcoin ETF, I'm just going to warn you, don't hold your breath. On top of that, we're going to take a look at some positive news for Theta as Sony joins the Theta network as a validator node on top of all the other great partnerships that they have going on, which was the reason for the pump yesterday. And of course, today uh, goes down a little bit as people take profits. And finally, we're going to just retouch on the investor program over at Voyager or the earnings call. Just want to go over a couple of things as we start to talk about Swissborg as I think it is the next Voyager uh, in Europe. So we'll do all those things. But first, I just want to say thank you so much to my sponsor for iTrust IRA. iTrust IRA, uh, I have one myself. I've had them for, well, going on two years now. And if you don't want to pay taxes, this is a great place to do it. Although there are some specifications. First up, if you have a traditional IRA uh, somewhere else or an old employer plan like a 401k, 403b, military TSP or 457, and you can move them over tax and penalty free. What I like about iTrust is that all the different cryptos that I have in there, uh, they will not be taxed as I take them out as I age, hopefully gracefully. And uh, you can take a look at uh, iTrust. There's a link in the description and Dan, you just get a 30 uh, day free trial. So go ahead and take a look at that. There's also a video I talk about how to actually set it up and use it and all those great things. So let's take a look at what is going on with the market today. So today it is the March 3rd, I believe, March, March 3rd. 10 o'clock a.m. Houston, Texas time in here for a little bit as we uh, just closed on the investment property. Going to go in there and do some uh, renovations today. But here's what we got uh, as far as the market goes. Bitcoin is in the last uh, 24 hours up 4% and I think it went to 52,000. Now we're sitting around 51,000. So that's great news. People were calling for a 25,000 Bitcoin, a 30,000 Bitcoin. Sure. Uh, maybe. I don't know. It, to me, it doesn't matter. Like I said, I'm just an investor. I don't trade. So if it goes up, hey, great. My portfolio is good. If it goes down, great. I just add to my dollar cost average. Uh, Ethereum still underperforming $1,600. It hit the 2000 top. And uh, that is when, because of my exit plan, I sold it a little bit. But uh, here we are. Cardano down a percentage. Again, great news, but down it goes. Binance coin, Tether. Everything's up a little bit, maybe down a little bit. Litecoin's up a little and uh, also, I want to make mention of the Theta, which is in the top. Now it's number 19. It had a monstrous day yesterday, but now it's down 2.5%. Why is it down? We'll take a look at that in a second. So that's what's going on. Let's move into today's top story. So today, oops, wrong one. Today, uh, ETF talk. Now, if you are new to cryptocurrency and you may be from the traditional world, you are probably excited about ETF. And I'm just going to warn you right now, uh, don't hold your breath because I've been hearing this same song and dance since 2017. I actually did, um, there was a video I looked back in 2012 and Roger Veer was talking about an ETF right around the corner. So I don't think it's going to happen, but uh, I Hopefully I am wrong. I'll be glad to be wrong. That's okay. I'm wrong all the time. Ask my wife. Let's take a look what's going on here. So on March 1st, the largest U.S. options exchange, CBOE, filed a registration with the U.S. SEC in order to list shares of the Van Eck Bitcoin Trust. I will say this. There is one positive thing about the SEC is that is that Jay Clayton is not there anymore. And it looks like we've got a person that's going to come in that is more blockchain and crypto friendly. So, uh, you know, hey, maybe. But uh, again, I've been hearing this for a long time. A lot of steps they have to go through and a lot of different issues that they have to solve because the SEC is not going to prove this if there's a lot of manipulation going on. Thanks to Ryan Gorman for pointing that out at one point in Trade the Chain. And uh, I think he's right. The filing written by CBOE's Associate General Counsel notes that the shares may be redeemable for Bitcoin. So this is important that it is not just some paper. It is redeemable for Bitcoin, settled in Bitcoin. That's what people want to hear about. And great. And the big thing you have to understand for ETFs, why are they so important? And I got this from Kevin O'Leary uh, from Shark Tank. He said he would feel more comfortable uh, investing into crypto if they had an ETF because it's what people like that are used to. So um, if you're talking about this, oh, you can put it into a cold storage and you can do it in Analedger or a Tezos and it's really easy. People are like, I don't know what you're talking about. I got 10 other things to do uh, in the next hour. I, I don't have time for this. ETF is like pick up the phone 
put me in this and uh, let's get it done. Click. That's it. That's what they're used to. Great. Uh, I'm happy that they come. I don't care if they're not holding in cold storage, whatever else. If they want to come in here and put their money that way, so much the better. Anyhow, VanEck applied with the SEC at the end of 2020, following this, the successful listing of a crypto ETF in Europe. On top of that, there is an Ethereum ETF going on over in Canada. I don't know if it's right now or it's coming up, but uh, ETFs are happening, just not in the good old US of A. And lastly, NYDIG registered for a Bitcoin ETF and named Morgan Stanley as a participant in the SEC filing. And also in January, Valkyrie Digital Assets also filed an ETF registration proposal called the Valkyrie Bit and Trust, and they're partnering up with the New York Stock Exchange. So again, um, I'm just gonna warn you that all these stories are great and we're, you know, we're hopeful it happens, but again, I'm not holding my breath. We'll see uh, how it all goes and uh, I'm, I hope it does. I hope I'm wrong, but I just don't see it actually happening. Let me know what you think in the comments section. Let's move on to our next piece. So, uh, Theta. First of all, I want to give a shout out to Digital Dave over at Crazy for Cryptos. He was the one that told me about this. He's the mad scientist that uh, said this is going to be big. And I was like, sure, Dave. And then, of course, when I looked into it, uh, I was wrong. And he was right. So, Sony, Sony, Sony joins the Theta network as a validator node. That's big. Um, and we're gonna take a look at some other partnerships in a bit. In, in 2016, this is how long Sony's been a part of this. In 2016, Sony's corporate venture capital participated in the seed funding round of Theta Labs. Besides Sony, Google, Samsung, Binance, Blockchain Ventures, and Gumi, they're also on the Theta Governance Council members. So this is important because when you take a look at a project, you always wanna talk about who is involved? Where are the deep pockets? How can they get, because it's not just about like a great product uh, that is coming out. It's also about a little bit of guidance and where to go. It's not what you know, it is who you know. And when you have these types of people behind it, you're like, it's pretty hard to fail. Let me ask you this. If you had access to Jeff Bezos right now, how hard do you think it would be to have a um, successful Amazon FBA business. Probably be pretty easy, right? Because that guy knows all the connections, everything else. The same thing is for business. It's not what you know, it's who you know. And Theta really has their foot in the door with a lot of great things. And the reason why I'm big into Theta, because like we just talked about this yesterday. What are you doing right now? Watching YouTube. What are people doing? Uh, they're working from home, they're doing Zoom. What are people, as far as sports, doing when uh, the pandemic uh, wiped away a lot of sports? They were doing esports. And esports is one of the fastest growing sports in the globe. So we need a lot of bandwidth. That's what Theta does. And on top of that, we we're talking about uh, people that are involved in here. Steve Chen, the co-founder of YouTube. Uh, you've got, again, the enterprise value I know is Google, Sony, Samsung, Binance, Blockchain, Gumi. Someone help me out with Gumi. I know it's very big, just not in the United States. I'm ignorant on this one. Uh, let me know in the comments section. But the big thing is here is we're talking about uh, not blockchain team, the uh, investors. I mean, you've got people, I mean, all the way like Samsung, Advanced Capital, Venture Reality Group, ZMT, ALF, ALF, IBC, Synapse Capital, and again, uh, co-founders of uh, YouTube, uh, G Fuel, Sony, gosh, Twitch, geez, Verizon, Microsoft. I mean, how do you not make this work? Uh, great news for uh, Theta. Now their next question is, why did it go down today? There's no reason. So as I'm talking about this, and I'm only talking as an investor, not a, um, a trader, just look for the fundamentals. Has anything changed with Theta? Was there some kind of problem? Was there some kind of hack? Did somebody come out and go, surprise, we're taking all your money and moving to Acapulco? It's not the case. It's just people taking profits and the uh, natural swings of things. So um, I can't give you financial advice, but for me, dollar cost average and uh, Theta is one of those that I buy uh, every two or three days, I think it is. So let me know what you think in the comments section. Let's move on to our last piece. Well, actually, before we do that, I just wanna tell you that over at danteachescrypto.com, this 100% free website, if you uh, sign up, it only takes your first name and email and I don't even spam you. But if you come in here and uh, in the uh, module, module five, if you click on that, I think it is the uh, uh, first or second one that comes up. And as we scroll down, second video, how do I stake Theta for passive income? This will show you how to uh, stake it for T Fuel. Very easy process. I haven't had much luck with the uh, the current version. Hopefully they can upgrade that um, 
that uh, staking module or uh, the uh, staking program because sometimes it kind of glitches a little bit. So hopefully in that uh, 3.0 main net, they're going to roll out in April 22nd. We'll see what all works out. Anyhow, let me know what you think in the comments section. And here is our last piece. I just wanted to uh, touch on this real quick. This was what we talked about yesterday as far as Voyager and the earnings call for their shareholders because Voyager is not only a great crypto app, it is also a publicly traded company. And you can see I'm big into uh, growth and Metcalf's law and uh, the network effect. And if you can see people, uh, for as far as new funded accounts, in December, they had, they had 6,000, January 65,000, 70,000 in February. And of course, their asset center management went from 230 million to 1.7 billion in February. That's huge. So we know Voyager is going to be big, but we need to look out and see what's the next thing. And uh, I think it's going to be Swissborg. And actually, um, I brought in uh, Alex Fazel. Uh, he is the business development officer. And uh, I just wanted to pick his brain and see what is going on with Swissborg. So we'll jump in that interview real quick. All right, so the article we just took a look at was Voyager and their earnings call. And what I'm trying to do is I'm fascinated by the brokerage model. So what I did was I reached out uh, to Swissborg. This is Alex Fazel, and he is the uh, chief uh, partnership officer for Swissborg. I've been looking, I've been talking about Swissborg for the last couple of months now, um, especially after I, we got into Voyager and we talked about how they had a meteoric rise from 29 cents just on January 7th, all the way up to six, seven dollars. And the brokerage model is also being used by Swissborg over in the European Union or Europe. So I had to ask Alex, what is going on with their growth and what's going on in the future? So Alex, thanks for coming on. I really appreciate it. Thanks so much for having me, Rob, and, and, and for all the great work that you're doing to educate the space. Love it. Yeah, I, I do my best. As I get older, which is happening more rapidly, I realize just how much things I do not know and need to learn. So that's why I have smarter people on the show like yourself. Yeah. All right. So first up, I just want to talk about, we'll just do a quick little recap. So here was the earnings call from Voyager, which, you know, pretty good. Everything's going great. But I want to talk, I want to start with the uh, price appreciation for Swissboard because everybody likes that. So let's just appetize people with what they want. So 93 cents today, pretty good. And you guys are up over, uh, over a two week period or 24 hours, 2.4. Uh, two weeks, 4.1, 30 days, almost 68%, and one year, an astounding 3,800%. So what do you attribute some of this growth to? And we'll dig into the details in your uh, platform in a bit. Yeah, it's a really good question, Robin. Just before this, you were talking about, you know, different valuation models and stuff like that. And I think historically, when we look at the facts, right, and we look at the numbers, you know, the BNB token or BNB coin from Binance, has outperformed any other coin and token from 2017 all the way to 2021. So there's definitely some, you know, tips there on, you know, what is a type of token that functions well, right? With what utilities does the token have? Uh, what are the tokenomics behind it? And what is the traction and growth that the platform is going through? So I think one thing that we learned was being fascinated by tokenomics is just like, wow, the BNB token, obviously Hobi token, KuCoin shares, yeah. all those tokens pumped a lot back in the day, but their their pump wasn't as sustainable as Binance because they don't have the same growth that Binance is going through. And VGX, by the way, the Voyager token mooned as well. And uh, it's simply because I think the this asset class of exchange tokens really has value. It has value and does not just rely on supply and demand. You know, you, you either, and what, the way I, actually categorize value is either it has an impact on money or time. Right. So I think those are the, the two most important factors, money because it's finance, but actually time is probably the most uh, important commodity because money, you can lose it and make it back, but time, you can never get it back. Right. So I think if, it, if you want to measure value, then if you take those two categories, these are all tokens within that specific exchange token asset class that just have real fundamental value. Yeah, perfect. And this is what uh, me and Pat Ackerman were talking about. Pat is uh, big on uh, Voyager and Celsius. I'm going to get him onto Swissborg at some point. But but we talk about the, the, the tokenomics, Metcalf's law, and the network effect. The more people that you guys bring in or a company brings in, and it actually has value or actually actually does something, then the, the, so much the better. And just like in 2017, we had that ICO craze. I think this year is the craze of, or not maybe the craze, but decentralized finance and maybe some of those platform tokens that actually do things like with what you guys do. So let's break it down and see what you guys do, huh? Let me share my screen. 
first one, I took a look at your Twitter account. It looks like you guys got uh, are, are doing yield or earning. And it looks like over a million plus of uh, Swiss Borg token has been earned so far. All right, people like that. And then we take a look at this. Let's talk a lot about the supported assets and which ones can actually gain yield because that's what everybody really wants to know about. What does it do? How much can I make? <laughs> that's really what yeah, it exactly. <laughs> as easy as that. <laughs> yeah. So you've got, these are the ones that are listed. Bitcoin, Ethereum, Swiss Borg, USD coin, which I have to tell you, 16% on a yield, pretty darn good. On a stable we had we had 30 percent rob just like uh, about uh one month and a half ago it was averaging between 25 to 30 percent apy uh just because at that time there was less usdc there were less stable coins being staked into the farms and and all the the automate automated market makers right um but now i guess the maybe the sentiment is a bit more bearish and more and more people are, are going into the the usd stable coin farms maybe they're expecting a correction so the yield is a little bit lower but still 16 percent is not bad <laughs> hey man i will i will take 16 percent over my bank over at wells fargo which gives me like a 0.08 or whatever it is <laughs> it's yeah. all right so then you, you got pax gold engine binance coin interesting ave uh that's one of my one of my uh bigger holds kyber network die compound ren and it looks like Uniswap and Polkadot are coming. And then these are the ones for as far as listing candidates. Stellar, Stellar Chili's, which is not big here in America, but I know that is, a, that is some type of platform for like sports and those types of things for like uh, teams and such. Hedera Hashgraph, Tezos, Cardano, Zillica Maker, Bat, and Chainlink. So talk to us real quick about these candidates, when maybe we could expect, what's, the, uh, what's you know, holding it back and then you know how these things are performing as well yeah thanks so much for mentioning that rob so right now as you're saying you know the smart yield which is d5 farming and three taps on a screen it's it's as easy as it can get uh is only available on usdc coin and we also have the swiss board token uh we're going to be releasing ethereum bitcoin bnb uh and also hopefully a euro stable coin eventually as well as the euro is our, our main region yeah, so those are <laughs> yeah those those take the priority in terms of before actually the actual listings because as you know most people hold you know these major assets and like you said you know we want them to enjoy the upside but also if the market is flat or even bearish still continue to earn yields yeah. no matter what the the market is doing exactly so tell us real quick what actually happens or what is uh the process of getting everything listed? Is it a really big deal? Because I know people always ask me like, why can't this exchange list this right now? Because I want it yesterday. So what do you what do you say? Yeah, that's a really good question. Well, you know, for us, you know, like Voyager, we don't own an order book. So we're a meta exchange. We aggregate to all multiple order books like Binance, Kraken, LMAX, uh, and of course, Bquant, Hit, BTC. Um, to get best execution. So for us to, to list a token, it needs to go through our custody provider. And those are the people that we try to push gently, come on, please hurry up, integrate the Cardano chain, integrate Kusama. And uh, we tried to do our best to speed things up, but we're, we're depending on that third party. Yeah, and our partner. Cust yeah, your custody partner and make sure it's safe because we've learned the lessons from the past, right? So that makes sense. Okay. Exactly. So there's that part. And then I want to just go over a couple more things, which was, so talk to us about this. This was interesting. Uh, the indicators on your app, because you do some type of AI type of thing where you can start to do like uh, bearish or bullish indicators, anything? Yeah. So that's a really good question. A uh, long story short, our vision of the app is not to be an exchange uh, we want to offer crypto wealth management, right? Where we not only give you the ability to buy and sell whatever asset you like, but to help you uh, while doing that. So we have three indicators. We, As you can see in, in the app, we have a daily indicator telling you how bullish and bearish uh, with different levels of confidence. Then we have also the weekly uh, indicator. Uh, and then we offer TA that's automated every single hour. Uh, with a community sentiment. So people within the app, are they mostly bullish or bearish? And we just offer these indicators so that people hopefully can time the market better, right? Not buy the top and you know sell the bottom as some people may freak out or get emotional and, and make bad decisions. So we, we hopefully can help them a little bit in that way. Yeah, so for all you traders out there, uh, this is for you, this is not for me. I am very boring. All I do is just <laughs> buy and hold. So sure, have, have at it. <laughs> All right, cool. And then this one is a big thing. 
is fees because I get this question a lot, even with Voyager, like, Hey, they're a brokerage, but sometimes, you know, the, the spread is this and we don't like that. So tell us about the fees and how you actually make it uh, transparent. Yeah. So I think that is one of my favorite topics, Rob, because, you know, we obviously know what Robin hood is doing with their zero commission, quote unquote. And uh, I don't really call out names that much, but I, I, I want to do it in this case sure. because the, Robinhood and other platforms like this are just replicating what traditional finance does. They just hide everything in a spread. And for those who don't know what that is, is basically they, they will say zero commission, but they're just buying the, the asset at a higher price than it is in real life. And they take a percentage of that. And the spreads, Rob, in crypto are terrible. Mm. They go from two, three percent in a simple spread and they can go and if you're using a credit card or, or a debit card it goes all the way up to 15 20 percent spreads so they're ripping people off so badly and people actually don't have the time to go in and look into what is a spread right they just say oh this is zero commission i'm going to buy there and they're getting ripped off and that doesn't go against that goes against the the whole morale and the philosophy of the blockchain which is being transparent and honest right at all times for a relationship of trust so with Swissborg, there's zero spread. We never take a spread and, and we just are very transparent with the fees. If you go as a, if you become premium, then you can have real zero commission plus best execution on multiple exchanges. Um, so I think that's really the key point. If people want to compare rates, um, they have to look at what is the official rate? What is also the spread that they're getting, which is more difficult. You'd have to actually look at the trades. Um, and then look at slippage as well, Rob, like one, the third yeah. critical point is slippage. Like what we do at Swissborg is, you know, all the tokens that are more illiquid, we, we maximize slippage to 3%. So if the trade is going to about to go outside of that 3%, either Swissborg will take the hit or we just, we, in the best case scenario, we just don't take the full trade. So if you wanted to buy Rob, let's say $10,000 but it's too volatile and the spread is crazy, we might execute only $3,000 and then let you execute, execute the rest later. While other exchanges, if you place your market order, I right? Sure. Yeah. Liquid, it will just, it will buy up at, at, or sell at a rate, which is crazy and you lose a lot of money. I bet you, I would think, I would, I'm just guessing here that sometimes you probably get, get complaints like, you didn't let me execute that order. Why didn't you let me execute that order? Because I wanted to do it. And you're like, hey, we're trying to protect you because it's over 3%. It's like 10%, what are you crazy? I'm just guessing. Exactly. Yeah. We, we get that a lot. And that's exactly the complaint we get. And we said, hey, we're just protecting you uh, so that you don't end up losing your money. Yeah. <laughs> you know, people, you, but you, I mean, the problem with this space is the problem that happened in 2016, 2017, where everybody's getting kind of screwed over and these ICOs and these rug pulls. So it's it's like a, a trust building exercise, constantly, constantly, constantly. I think the ones that actually build the trust, have a great product, give people what they want, and then step out of the way are the ones that are gonna be the winners. And that's just what I'm trying to do on this channel, find the winners before everybody else does. All right, so you were talking about the actual premium uh, for the tokenomics for uh, Swissborg token. Let's dig into that because that's the one that really uh, kind of interests me. So this is what we got. You guys have like two tiers, standard and premium. So yeah. talk to us real quick about how that works, because I mean, I'm big on Voyager and I like how they have that, that new loyalty program coming out. This is similar. What are the what do we got here? Yeah. And I think the Voyager loyalty program is, is really well put. I think uh, it makes a lot of sense. I mean, just for those watching out there, if you're using Amazon and you're an Amazon Prime member, it's mm. very similar, right? The brokerage model is a membership, right? And in this case for Swissborg, uh, this membership allows you to save money and make more money. And that's why the token itself has very robust economics because most people want to save money and, and make money more. So uh, if you go, <laughs> as simple as that, right? I mean, if you go premium, uh, you'll get real zero commission on Bitcoin, stable coins, gold, uh, Swissborg tokens, and then 50% off all the other tokens. And you'll also double your yield. So, uh, well, you know, yeah. instead of having 14, 15% on USDC, you could get up to 30% yield. So you're making more money and you're saving money. And, and that's what robust uh, tokenomics should be like. Exactly. So tell us real quick about to get into those, those two tiers, how much Swiss board do you need? Or is that in flux right now? That's in flux. And thank you so much for asking that question, Rob. So we're about to have, we're eventually going to have three levels. So non-premium, and then we're going to have a community premium where it's roughly 
the equivalent of a, a 1K USD. And then we're going to have like a premium plus, which is going to be, uh, we don't know exactly yet, but uh, it's going to be a higher amount of tokens required so that you can have something for everyone. Like someone who doesn't want to be involved with Susborg, they don't have to. If they want to get preferential rates uh, at a basic level, they're not, they're a hodler, they're not a big trader. They can go to the community premium. If they're big, if they're brokers or exchanges and they're trading high uh, volume, then they'll want to go to that premium plus. So it will be brackets of, of three different uh, ways of doing things. Awesome. We'll be, we'll be looking for it. Well, I'll be looking for it. Unfortunately, I can't get any of it now because I'm in. Uh, yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> my last point. Here's the support of countries. Uh, everything. <laughs> <laughs> Everything besides the United States. That's a lot of stuff. So uh, yeah. uh, how about Australia? Are you guys over there? Not in Australia yet, but it's Aust more of a technological issue uh, oh. just because of the servers. Yeah. Okay. And then, uh, well, you're in Canada. That's good. That's great. So yeah. uh, what are the plans for Australia and the U.S.? The U.S. is complicated. I mean, uh, as you know, probably Rob very well, like Binance U.S. Didn't, it wasn't exactly the biggest success. And, and that's Binance, right? This is a company that has lots of power. Um, so I think the U.S. Is, is quite challenging at the moment, but um, hopefully one day uh, we'll, we'll see how it goes. Like for the time being, we're, we're already, we have our hands full in the EU because it's, yeah. it's, there are many different cultures, lots of diversity and lots of uh, customization and localization to do. Um, and then Australia and New Zealand, for those who don't know why, like many apps go out there, it's just in terms of servers, the location, uh, it slows down. There's too much, too, the levels of latency are quite high in those areas and you need to set up uh, new tech to, to, to reach that region. So um, I think Australia and New Zealand will probably be before the U.S. I'm really sorry, Rob, but I, that's uh, just a personal feeling. <laughs> hey, man, can't win them all. You can't win them all. That's okay. <laughs> so so real quick, we in the very beginning, we, we talked about tokenomics and network effect and all those things. And then we also took a look at the growth of Voyager. Talk to us real quick about the growth over here at Swissborg. Because as I understand it, you guys have grown pretty fast, not just on the price, but in user onboarding. And that, to me, is, I think, that the bigger thing. Yeah, it's it's crazy, Rob. Even though we're in the EU, and I don't think growth is is as spectacular as the US or, for example, in Asia. Yeah. But um, but still, we we had like a, a hundred thousand verified users in a single month. You know, every day was exceeding five thousand KYC users on a daily basis, and we went from, you know, five to ten million dollars of daily trading volume all the way up to close to a hundred million dollars of daily trading volume within the span of, you know, three months. So um, the, the growth is exponential. It's it's completely mind boggling. We never expected such growth. And it's really thanks to Bitcoin, I guess, right? It was just when uh, the sleeping giant woke up and uh, everyone woke up with Bitcoin. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, well, it, it, it is that. And from from uh, subscribers who are in, in Europe, they tell me how easy the actual uh, app is to use. So that's big. And then we're talking about the, the brokerage models, the fees are lower and you put all those things together that's pretty much why you go to it as opposed to some crazy exchange somewhere no one's ever heard of and then off you go so great so we so the last thing i, I just want to touch on thanks again alex for your time was the team so i'm big into talking about uh you know i invest in people so tell me real quick about just just a brief overview of like like your team and their history or wh where they've been yeah thank you so much for asking well it's funny because in, in the beginning the team was more of a fintech team. Now it's like tech fin. <laughs> so we have more engineers than, than actually guys from traditional finance. But I guess that was the original idea of Swiss Pork was to really take the on-chain and off-chain worlds and connect the two and really understand how can we take the best practices from traditional finance, but also you know take advantage of the innovation behind it that banks are not using. and and combine the two and yeah, there was there's one thing i want to share with you rob which means a lot to me and and i and i really hold this deeply in my heart is we did an ico in 2017 2018 mm -hmm. and our tokens the found the founding team members tokens are still locked it's been four years since the ico and uh we've been ethical from day one we never took any shortcuts and that's something that i'm really happy because we had to prove our point and still we, we haven't unlocked the tokens um, so none of us are driving Ferraris or, or these kind of things. We kept it low key, and uh, and we've always been humble 
from day one, never took any shortcuts. So I just wanted to add that little ethical side on it. But um, other than that, you know, we hire from Polytechnique Lausanne okay. and Polytechnique Zurich in Switzerland. Polytechnique Zurich uh, had Einstein was a professor there, just to give you an idea on how awesome the, the, the tech and the science um, uh, uh, actual uh, category um, departments are in, in that area. So, um, so we're very we're, we're blessed to have some of the best engineers in the world and and uh, all under one roof. And it's amazing. Perfect. So bonus question. Talking about smart people, I want to share something with you because there was a story that, that we had talked about before. I'm going to pull this up real quick. Oh, uh, yeah, that was, that was really cool. So this was a, an article in a newspaper. I don't know if anybody remembers those. There was things called newspapers. They were made of paper and then there would be printed words on there and you didn't need your phone. It was awesome. So this was uh, from the late 90s and it talks about in early 97, Jeff Bezos, richest, second richest man in the world, I think now with uh, Amazon, flew to Boston to give a presentation at the Harvard Business School. He spoke to a class taking a course uh, called Managing the Market Space. And afterward, the graduate students pretended he wasn't there while they dissected the online retailer's prospects. At the end of the hour, they reached a consensus. Amazon was unlikely to survive the wave of established retailers moving online. And they stated this, you seem like a really nice guy, so don't take this the wrong way, but you really need to, you really need to sell to Barnes and Noble and get out now. One of the students bluntly, bluntly informed Jeff Bezos. So it was a good thing that uh, Jeff did not uh, take that uh, sage advice. And he said, you know what? I'm just going to keep going with Amazon. We'll see how it works out. So Alex, your CEO had the same type of uh, experience at Harvard Business School? Yeah, it was, it was really funny. It's almost identical. Uh, and the, the question was, you know, crypto assets. It was talking about finding a valuation model related that could connect with crypto assets, right, as, as the new asset class. This student, a very intelligent student, asked uh, Anthony, our co-founder, saying, oh, listen, uh, the reason why this is just purely speculative and there's no value in blockchain is because all these projects do not fit the traditional dividend discount model or do not fit, you know, the, the actual discounted cash flow model, DCF, DCD. And uh, our co-founder had a smile on his face, a little smirk, and he, he replied to this question or this, this argument with a question. And he asked him, he says, he asked him, is it that crypto assets do not fit the model or is it that we haven't found a model yet that fits crypto assets? Mm -hmm. And I think that was a very nice question to ask and kind of silenced, you know, some of these young, intelligent people, or at least make them reflect on how valuation models do not adjust as fast as technology. Technology is always like the fastest and um, growing space. And then obviously regulatory and valuation models and everything follows later. But, uh, but it, I, I just said uh, it was a great story for me to hear and, and be a part of. And, and I thought it was, it was very elegant. Yeah. So, <laughs> so everybody out there watching, you watching right now, just remember some of the smartest people in the room, they're still smart, but they can't tell you where things are going. They can tell you where it's been because they're experts. But as far as where it's going, it's anybody's guess. That's why we try to do things like this. Alex, uh, that is it. I want to say thanks again for coming on the show. I appreciate it. And uh, any last parting words of wisdom? Or actually, you know what? This is what I like to do. Give us your best elevator pitch for SwissBorg. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you so much, first, like Rob, for, for having me on the show. And, you know, I think we, we haven't made enough friends in the U.S., and I'm very happy to, to be connected with you. And uh, for SwissBorg, I would say SwissBorg is a Swiss wealth management company in crypto, 100% backed by community or with a community centric approach. Perfect. A sentence to a couple of sentences is all you need to know. All right, Alex, <laughs> I'm gonna your time. thanks for coming by. Let's jump back. Thanks. All right, so, so that's it. So I know it was a little bit longer, but I thought it was great information. And uh, I want to thank Alex again for coming by. Uh, really important. If I could get my grubby hands on uh, Swissborg, I would do it. Uh, I need to take a look at maybe at Uniswap. Ooh. So that's it for today. Hey, if you made it all the way to the end and you liked the video, why don't you give it a thumbs up? That would really help the channel. Also consider subscribing because everything we talk about is time sensitive. And then if you like these types of videos, I'm going to put two more up on the left and right. Let YouTube do its magic. And that is it for today. So thanks for stopping by. I appreciate it. And I'll see you on the next one.